Hello everyone, it's Niven, and today I am making CopperCube 6 tutorial video. CopperCube 6 is a game engine which is available for free, link is in the description, download it and follow along. Today I am talking about particle systems. I will be making particle systems and demonstrate how you can manage to create your own particle systems in CopperCube 6. But before that, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what particle systems are. Basically, they are collections of small images that, when viewed together, form a more complex object, such as fire, smoke, maybe rain, and fireworks. These complex effects are controlled by specifying the behavior of individual particle using properties such as initial position, velocity, and lifespan. Now, those are risky words. So let me explain it more simple, simpler, let's say. Basically, particle systems are a group of dots, group of objects, points in space, which you can control and which you can specify where to go, how many to go, and when to end. Let's demonstrate this physically. We should go to our scene graph explorer Let's click on Startup Skybox, delete. Let's click on Cube Mesh, delete. Once again, I'm telling this every time in the tutorial, we have five different windows. We have Scene Graph Explorer, we have Properties, we have Prefabs, and we have Textures. You should know this. Now, we should go to Create, and if we go down here, we will have Particle Systems. And click on that, and here it is. Now, this is very simple. This is nothing special, but we'll go through each and in each individual item in this particle system. As you can see, when we click on particle system, we should go to attributes and we see all those different confusing options, but they're not really. Basically, our first option is direction. Direction depends on which direction you actually want the particles to go. For example, it goes upwards, right? The middle one is upwards. So let's say we want it to go downwards. We press minus and it will go downwards like this. See? Now this is maximal uh, angle degrees. As you can see, it's zero, which means that it's going only down straight. If we add 25 degrees, it will go 25 degrees in different direction, all directions, X, uh, Y, and Z. Now, this is the emission area. As you can see, the emission area is not specified. Let's click on 10, let's do 10, and let's do 10. And now it's kind of specified where we want this to go. Uh, then we have minimal lifetime and maximal lifetime. What are those? Those are the times when particle systems exist. So basically, you should always do maximal lifetime first, let's say 2000, and then do minimal lifetime, which will be uh, 1500. And that's it. As you can see, it began to take form. Then we have maximal particles, which is 200. Let's say I want uh, 1,000, and it will create 1,000 particles. Now, uh, particles per second, this is maximal and minimal. Uh, we should create, let's say, 50, and minimal should be 25. And this does look kind of weird, but yeah. Now, starting uh, color is white. Uh, let's change this to, uh, you know, let's change this to kind of purplish and let's change this to kind of uh, greenish. And yeah, this, this kind of looks odd, but uh, it's, it's nice. Now, this is the size of X and Y, so it's uh, minimal sizes and maximal. Let's say we want, uh, you know, two, we want two, we want uh, three, and we want three. So it will create that type of, type of uh, you know, uh, particle system. Now fade out, we do need the fade out. As you can see, fade out means that the particles will disappear, but they will fade out. So basically, 
This is the example, as you can see, when I press fade out, see what happens? So it fades like a snowflake. You can use fade out if you want to create uh, snow, for example. If you want to create rain, you should probably not mark fade out because then the drops will just go down uh, naturally. So if you click on uh, fade out, we can specify the fade time and also color. Let's make this color cyan like that. It looks beautiful. Uh, and we can also change scale. Uh, let's say change scale to 5 and 5. So this changes the scale of uh, the particle system before it disappears. And now let's go to materials. As you can see, we have specific 2D image material for this, but I can use something else, for example, this one. And as you can see, it creates this weird thing. Uh, we can use this one. <laughs> this is also weird. And uh, yeah, many things. Now, this matters. The transparency matters because if you want to create snow or if you want to create fire, you should definitely have a transparent add file which will create something like this so it will have only object color uh, transparent alpha is not used a lot because basically you have entire image and it looks really weird now i will be giving you the example of prefabs which are actually available uh, with copper cube so we have fire and we have smoke and as you can see we have those two prefabs available for free and you can actually go to attributes and uh, create your own uh, particle system based on already built particle system for example we can change this to fire and hold on let's click on transparent head and as you can see now this is a gorgeous looking fire it's kind of you know neat looking it's very different from this one as you can see Basically, that's it for the tutorial. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope I did manage to explain particle systems for you. Uh, as I say, what matters in the game development is your own personal preference. You should go and learn and experiment with those particle systems and come up with your own original ideas if you want to make a space exploration, if you want to make some magical rain or some magical effects. You can create anything you want. It depends on two things. Number one is how you manage and what you plan to do and number two is texture always think about texture if you want to create rain uh, you should find transparent raindrop texture or make it yourself if you want to find if you want to make a snow you should find a snowflake if you want to make a fire you should find a flame transparent image this all depends on your personal preference you can make your own textures of course and that's basically it. Thanks everyone for watching. This was a great tutorial. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please be free. Uh, feel free to ask. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.